Hey everyone, welcome back to the Thinkorswim tutorial series. In today's video, we'll learn how to place a stop loss order on an options contract. However, instead of doing it the normal way, basing it off the actual option price itself, we'll instead be using the underlying stock price itself to activate the stop. For example, let's say you had a long call option on Apple. The stock is currently trading at around 148 ish, and let's say you wanted to stop out of your long call if Apple went below 145 a share. Now this would be called a conditional order and it's what we're going to walk you through in today's video. And to make sure you get the hang of it, we're going to go through a few different examples. The first one will be on a position we don't own yet, but placing a stop along with that opening trade. The second will be on a long option you already hold in the account. And then finally, we'll also do it on a short option just because I know that can be a little bit confusing. Now jumping right into it, let's go up here to the trade page, make sure we're on all products so we can see the option chain down below here. And if we continue to use Apple as an example, Let's go ahead and use the 17 December expiration and go ahead and open that up. From there, we're going to scroll down through the option chain and let's go ahead and find a long call that we want to buy. Let's say we like the price of these 150 calls here. They're currently going for 370 by 375. We're going to buy the opening contract just like we normally would. We're going to go ahead and click on that asking price, $3.80. From there, it opens up an order ticket just like always. We're buying one of the Apple 17 December 150 calls for $3.80. Now it flipped to 375, we'll go ahead and lock that in just so it doesn't change on us. Now once we end up buying this thing, we want to automatically put out a stop along with it to stop ourselves out if Apple goes down to 145 or lower. So what we're going to do is come over here to advanced order where it currently says single order. We'll go ahead and click on that. And for this one, we're going to use first trigger sequence, which means this first order is going to trigger our second order, second order would trigger the third order, and so on. Now in our case, we only have one additional order to go out there, which is going to be the stop in this case but that's how the first trigger sequence advanced order works. Now the next thing we're going to do is simply right click anywhere on this green order ticket and say create opposite order. Once you do that, it's going to create the opposite order of what we were currently doing. In this case, it's saying we want to sell that 117 December 150 call and we want to sell it for 375. Now remember, in this case, we didn't want to sell it at 375. We wanted to get stopped out if Apple the stock went below 145 a share. So what we need to do is come over here to the far right hand side of the order ticket and click on this little gear icon. Now what that's going to do is bring up our little conditional order window. And this is where we're going to set all of those parameters. Now this can be a little bit confusing, which is why we're going to go through it step by step. What you need to do is come down here to the little conditions window. And all you have to do is click in this little black box below the word symbol. When you click in that box, it's going to throw in the symbol that we're currently trading. So in this case, Apple, which is Apple the stock. All we have to do next is click in the little black box below method. It's going to default to mark and we're going to leave it as that, the mark price. The trigger is currently less than or equal to, which is perfect because remember, we wanted to submit this order if the stock price for Apple went below 145 a share. So in this case, less than or equal to is perfect. And all we have to do is change this threshold from zero to 145. So we'll go ahead and highlight that and put in 145. And that's perfect. So now we're saying we don't want to submit this order ticket until Apple the stock goes less than or equal to 145 a share. Now we're not quite done yet. And that's because up here, this is the order that will be submitted when Apple goes below 145, which means an order would be submitted to sell it with a limit price of 375 or better, which doesn't really make a whole lot of sense in this case. Remember, it's very unlikely that this options contract would be trading for 375 if Apple the stock went down below 145. We could try and make a rough guess as to what the price of this contract would be at that time, but we have no idea because it's entirely dependent on the timing. If Apple went down today to 145, maybe this contract would still be trading for two bucks or 215, who knows? But if Apple was trading at 145 by 17 December, this contract could be practically worthless at that time. Now, one way to get around that would be changing this from a limit order to a market order, which means whenever Apple goes below 145 a share, a market order would be submitted to sell this contract at whatever the current price was. Now, I personally would never submit a market order on an options contract because those bid-ask spreads could be quite wide and who knows what we're going to get filled at. Maybe there's no liquidity on this contract when it gets submitted, the bid's only a penny, and I end up selling my contract for a penny when it's really worth a dollar. So what I personally do is I would change this. Instead of being a market order, I would leave it as a limit order. However, instead of putting in a price here myself, a manual price, I'm going to go ahead and link it to a trigger. So we're going to go ahead and click on this and we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom where it says mark. Now, what we've essentially said is we have no idea what this options contract is going to be trading for when Apple goes below 145. So what we want to happen is a limit order to still be submitted, but we want it to go in at whatever the mark price is at that time, which generally speaking is going to be whatever the midpoint is on that option contract whenever Apple trades below 145. 
So let's say when this happens, Apple's trading at 145. This contract we just bought, this 150 call, is currently going for a bid of $2 and an ask of 250. Our order would be submitted right at the mid price between those two numbers. So between 2 and 250, it would go in at 225. So it's still a limit order, but we're saying we have no idea what it's going to be at that time. So let's go ahead and put it in at whatever the midpoint is. Now, since we are putting it in at the midpoint, we still are not guaranteed to get a fill, but we are trying to protect ourselves at least a little bit with this. Now, you also have the ability to offset it a little bit. Let's say we didn't want it to go in right at the midpoint. We want it to be a little bit more competitive. And remember, in our example, the midpoint when this gets triggered is 225 because the bid is 2, the ask is 250, the midpoint is currently 225. Let's say we wanted to submit it 5 cents below whatever the mid was to make our order a little bit more competitive. We could go ahead and change this from plus 00, zero to negative 0 0.05. And now in this example, our limit order would get submitted at 220, 5 cents below whatever the midpoint was when Apple goes below 145 a share. And I know that was a lot. It was a little bit confusing. You might have to rewatch the section a couple times just to get it ingrained in your brain. But this is a safer way to do it than just simply putting out a market order. Now, once we're happy with this, we'll go ahead and hit save. And you can see here what we've essentially done is said, hey, we want to buy one contract of the 150 calls when the price is trading at 375 or better. If or when that order fills, I then want to automatically put out a stop right behind it to stop me out if Apple ever goes below 145. All we'd have to do then is hit confirm and send. Make sure our order ticket looks right. You can't really see the condition in there that we've set, but it's in there. If it was right, we would just hit send, and that's it. Now, in our case, we're not going to do that. We'll go ahead and delete this out of here. But that's how to place a stop based off the stock price on an option you don't even own yet. Now, let's go ahead and go through the process on doing it on an option we already hold in the account, and specifically a long option. So let's go over to the monitor page, where we can see all of my current positions. We're going to scroll down, and we're going to be using SPY as an example in this case. Right here, we can see my SPY position. You can see I bought one of the 5 November 463 calls and I bought it for 89 cents. Now, SPY is currently trading for 459.29. Let's say I wanted to get stopped out of this contract if it ever went below 458. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and right click on this options contract. I'm gonna say create a closing order and I'm gonna say sell one SPY contract. Once you click on that, it's gonna take you back to the trade page to an order ticket that looks identical to what I'm sure you're already used to. Making sure everything looks right, you can see it says I want to sell one of my SPY 5 November 463 calls for 87 cents or better. Now remember, that's not what I want to do, so I'm going to come over here to the little gear icon on the far right hand side of the order ticket. We'll go ahead and click on that. And just like before, you've got the little conditional order window. And this is going to be set up the exact same way as before. We're going to come over to the symbol box and go ahead and click in that. Just like before, it's going to fill in the symbol of the stock we're actually trading right now, and we're trading the SPY options. We're going to then move over and click in the little black box below method. We're going to leave it on mark. We're going to make sure the trigger says less than or equal to. And we're going to change the threshold to 458 in this case. Now that we've got that set up, it's waiting for this condition to be met before it submits this order ticket up here at the top. Now, like we walked through it before, you could just change this to market and it's simply going to submit a market order whenever this is triggered. Or if you want to be a little bit more careful with how you submit it, we'll go ahead and leave it as a limit order. We're going to come down here where it says limit link to manual. We're going to scroll all the way down and find mark, and we're going to leave it as a zero cent offset. So whatever SPY trades less than or equal to 458, whatever this options contract is trading for at that time, whatever the mid price is at that time, my order will be submitted at that price, but with a limit order. Now that I'm happy with that, we'll go ahead and hit save. You can see my order ticket has changed slightly, and we go ahead and hit confirm and send, and I'll actually go ahead and send this. Now that I sent it, we can go over to the monitor page and take a peek at my working order. You can see it hasn't filled yet. I've said I want to sell that one contract of the SPY 5 November 463 calls whenever SPY trades for less than 458. And remember, it's going to submit this limit order in at whatever the midpoint is on this contract at the time my condition is met. Now, hopefully that answers those first two questions, but the last one is going to be how to do it on a short options contract. So let's go ahead and use one of the ones I have in my position statement right now. I've got a bunch of options against Tesla. Let's go ahead and use one of these. I'm simply going to right click on it. So we'll use the 715 puts in this case. Go ahead and right click on it and say create a closing order. Buy one Tesla 5 November put. Now remember I originally sold this put. So in this case I would be buying it back. Now in the case of Tesla I'd only be losing money in this case if Tesla starts going against me. 
So let's say I wanted to buy this thing back if Tesla started going down to 800 or lower, because that means I'm starting to get tested on these short puts. So just like before, I'm gonna come over here to the little gear icon on the right hand side. I'm gonna click below the little black box below the word symbol. Just like always, it automatically pops in the symbol of the stock we're trading. We'll go ahead and click under method. We'll leave it at mark. And in this case, because it is a short put, I'm actually gonna still leave this as less than or equal to. And I'm gonna throw in 800 right here. And just like in the previous examples, if I wanted to, I could make it a market order. But like always, I'd prefer to use a limit. I'd rather change this from manual to mark. And now my order will be submitted at whatever the midpoint is at the time this order is triggered. So in this case, let's say Tesla starts to go down to 800. Let's say that options contract is now trading for $5 by $5.10. My order would be submitted to buy back this short put option at $5.05, right between the midpoint of $5 and $5.10. And just like I've already said multiple times in the previous examples, there is no guarantee that this order will fill. It is a limit order, so I am specifying a price. So unless I can get it for that price or better, it will not fill. If I wanted to guarantee that this order does get filled, that I do get stopped out of it, I could put in a market order instead, but I'm not willing to take the risk of just taking whatever the market is willing to give me at that time. Who knows what the bid-ask spread will be when this order is triggered. Just like before, I'd go ahead and hit save, make sure everything looks right in this order ticket, and I'd hit confirm and send in the lower right-hand corner. And that about wraps everything up for this video. Hopefully this answers all your questions about how to create stops on options based on the underlying stock price. If I did miss anything or you guys have any additional questions at all, please leave them down below in the comments. If you guys are trying to learn more about Thinkorswim, feel free to check out my playlist, my other Thinkorswim tutorial videos. Don't forget to hit the like button on your way out and I'll catch you all in the next video.